What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and today we're gonna be talking about the massive surprise updates we got with Season 2 Reloaded, all new patch notes and some secret changes. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, drop a like, and let me know down below in the comment section. How are you guys liking the mid-season 2 update thus far and are you playing more of multiplayer, the raid, maybe some Warzone 2 and DMZ? I actually really like the new multiplayer map, Pimmel Mat Expo. I think it plays fairly well in just about every game mode, but that's of course subjective. You guys might think the map is just a bit too large, such as Museum or some other maps that are in this multiplayer and do you think this is the map that Modern Warfare 2 desperately needed? I want to say I'm surprised that this was going to be safe for Season 3. I think Season 2 Reloaded definitely needed an original 6v6 map and hopefully we get more original maps in the future that aren't from Almazra or pulled from Las Almas. But with that being said, here are the following playlists that are live across COD 2.0. Starting off with multiplayer, we have Battle on Santa Sienna, which is Ground War and Invasion on just that map. We have the Party Modes Mosh Pit featuring Infected, One in the Chamber, all or nothing and even gun game on a variety of smaller maps here in MW2. You're seeing footage of party games here on screen right now. We also have Himmelmat Expo 24-7 luckily. 10v10 ended up staying in the game which I'm surprised about and we also have third person drop zone another new game mode and then we have the new close quarters mosh pit which features a small map playlist of a variety of different game modes on just the smaller maps in this game but I am hearing reports that there are some bigger maps popping up in that playlist too. It's probably a bug but then for Warzone 2.0 we now have resurgence available for all squad sizes thankfully so for those that are waiting on that for a couple of weeks we finally have every squad size available and we also have all squad sizes for regular battle royale and that's just about it for now i'm sure mini royale or some other ltms will return at some point in the future for warzone 2.0 but also big reminder about the xp event i made a video a couple of days ago talking about the new triple xp event being offered for the game and right after i posted that video the xp event ended up getting pushed back by a week so with that being said as of today march 16th there is 20 24 hours of double XP available for PS4 and PS5, but starting tomorrow on the 17th, every platform will get double XP, as well as double weapon XP and even double battle pass token XP. So with that being said, it's a triple double event for every platform beginning tomorrow, but as of right now, today, you can get some regular XP for just PlayStation platforms. Now, also with the release of the Mid-Season 2 update, you can now preview some upcoming operator skins in the menu, starting off with Shredder, who's not releasing until March 21st. That'd be cool if you get more Turtle skins at some point in the future, too but I think it's just going to be Shredder for this crossover specifically. Get a nice glimpse there of Shredder. He's a brand new operator, of course, not just a skin for somebody else in the game. And we also get a preview of our new ghost skins. The first one is the Bone Chiller one, which is coming out tomorrow on March 17th. That features the golden mask look for the character and even a blueprint for the brand new Tempest Marksman rifle. That is, of course, a tracer pack, so you guys might end up considering that one. But we also have an unknown release date for the Deep Water Bundle, which is going to feature a campaign skin for the character of Ghost himself. And we also got a look at the new Generator XRK skin for Farah, which is coming out at some point before the end of Season 2. I'm sure in Season 3, we're going to end up seeing a free skin for Farah via a raid opportunity, similar to the opportunities we have for Gaz and Price thus far with Episodes 1 and 2 of the raid. But there you have it for a new preview of some upcoming Operator skins for COD 2.0. Now, we also have some other interesting updates that you guys might have missed that weren't in the patch notes. First off, there were some major complaints about tax printing being bugged out here in Modern Warfare 2. Infinity War did say that they were working on a small update to correct irregular animation and behavior to tax sprint. The change was unintentional and due to current investigation around the melee sprint reset exploit, tax sprint behavior should return to normal once the update is live. And a few hours after that tweet went out, they did say that yes, the update did go live and they confirmed that it did resolve the reported issues with tactical sprint. So if that was an intentional change for tax sprint, that just wouldn't have worked out well. And so many people out there would have been super upset with COD 2.0 movement. People are already complaining about movement as it is i can't see them wanting to uh dig a deeper hole for movement in this game or even warzone 2.0 so luckily that did get changed and everybody out there can breathe a sigh of relief there i mean it's absolutely hilarious but we also have a new change for the animation time calling in uavs within multiplayer so i think this also does affect battle royale and resurgence but correct me down below in the comments if it doesn't the animation time for calling one in has been slightly decreased which is great because it was a little prolonged before I think uh, the way it is now makes a lot more sense, but it gets me thinking, right? These are changes that you would have expected right after a beta, so maybe during the launch window or season one at the latest, you see changes like this to animation speeds, but better late than never, I suppose. It just feels like, as most other creators have said, it's like they're playing catch-up right now with a lot of the changes that are needed in multiplayer and Warzone. Things that should have been fixed a long time ago, but the way I see it, better they fix it now so that we at least have another smooth seasons three, four, and five, maybe even a six. 
and overall just a good change altogether so i'm sure you guys agree with that but we also have a brand new menu for weapon and camel challenges so if you guys press start and go to challenges you'll see a new screen that pops up and you can also see daily challenges as well across all these categories so absolutely great to see that they're going to be improving the ui bit by bit as we're going to be talking more about with the patch notes in a couple of minutes the ui could use significant improvement and i want to hope that future con installments have better ui that aren't just a bunch of side scrollers like mono warfare 2 is but as they keep overhauling the ui with every major content update i think by the end of this game's life cycle people out there are going to be a little bit more accepting of the way everything is laid out but you guys might disagree with that let me know how you feel about this ui down below in the comments now we also have an update that wasn't mentioned in the patch notes and that is an extension to the kill feed it's now showing up to i believe six events you know whether those are kills headshots uh, melees executions it's not going to show you more info than it did before now there are some important changes and announcements in regards to warzone 2 and dmz i'll be covering all of that in a separate video of course but now as we have it here the season 2 reloaded patch notes they broke it everything down into game mode category which is great starting off globally we have events so we have new path of the running challenges allowing you to unlock two universal camos and a golden charm i'll be covering those challenges on stream later today and also be unlocking the brand new marksman rifle as well to see you guys there but i'll probably make a separate video talking all about that event as well we also have the st patrick's day update for almazra so you will now see a green river and a rainbow shining across the map which is awesome i don't believe this is going to be seen in dmz almazra i could be mistaken but at the very least it'll be featured over in battle royale almazra we have a new raid episode i covered all of that in some content yesterday a full guide and a separate video about all the rewards you can unlock that you guys probably didn't know about and then we of course have no assignment necessary for the raid as well as raid bundle for season two featuring captain price we have a new weapon here the tempest torrent marksman rifle you guys probably already knew about that or have already unlocked it the blueprint for it that you can get through a bundle is releasing tomorrow with that bone chiller tracer pack then we have weapon balancing so starting off with ars they've added minimum damage against armor for the stb 556 for lmgs they've reduced far range damage and they have a small increase to close range damage reduced headshot and reduced upper torso damage as well as increased recoil for the raw mg rpk reduced walking speed and reduced muzzle velocity yet another nerf to what was once the meta for ka 2.0 we also have for the second mg reduced damage range and for the crossbow increased time period to trigger double kills for challenges that's pretty cool smgs increased mid damage ranges and then that's for the mx9 for the bass p they've increased sprint to fire and increased damage ranges the PDSW, slightly offset weapon while ADS using iron sights to improve visibility. For the VEL, increased close damage ranges and fixed attributes on 30 round magazines to improve handling and mobility. For the Lockman sub, reduce movement speed, reduce aim down sight, improve recoil control. And then for the ML, or excuse me, the LM, Nebula Barrel, they've improved damage range and recoil control. For shotguns, thankfully, we have an update for the KV Broadside, the most annoying weapon to date, I think, in Call of Duty. They've reduced lower torso damage, and for 12 gauge ammo, they've went ahead and reduced damage ranges and reduced close range damage. There you go. Dragon's Breath, however. They've reduced damage ranges and close range damage and global reduction to 12 gauge dragon's breath maximum residual damage that's huge because that was becoming a problem and was a problem for a good what two three weeks bryson 800 and 890 increased headshot damage on all slug type ammo added minimum damage against armor but then for attachments we have updates for flinch uh ammunition right here as you guys can see a lot of reductions that were probably needed under barrel launchers remove movement penalty from grenade launchers added recoil one extra ammunition stock uh, update here to regular stocks, bipod grips, underbarrel grips, muzzle attachments, even optics, comb attachments even, and then some bug fixes overall. Fix an issue where equipping some attachments to the KV broadside would cause players to not be able to infill into DMZ. Fix heartbreaker crossbow blueprints, reticle appearance and kill cams, an issue that prevented crossbow balls from penetrating water, which was interesting. And then for regular equipment, Damage against armor increase for grenades. Damage against armor increase for claymores. And then damage against armor increase for semtexes. But for audio, another big one here. Uh, oh, almost skipped it there. For audio, sub-mix fixes that were affecting enemy footstep volume. Equalized uh, sand footsteps to better cut through the mix, similar to dirt and concrete. An issue that caused war tracks to randomly stop playing when inactive in a vehicle. And then fix an issue preventing war tracks of a patrol boat's driver from being heard while in the patrol boat turrets. 
for UI. Here's a massive one that I don't think anybody out there has talked about too much. Update requires restart. If the title requires a restart due to an update, it will restart automatically. It won't just pop up on your screen and say, oh, press X or whatever your button is to go ahead and restart it. It'll do it right away. Thank God, because that can waste a little bit of time when you're booting up your game every other day and, oh, another restart. <laughs> you got to do another update. That's a great change, right? Something that people out there have made into a meme at this point with Call of Duty. New menus. All new menus for Weapon and Camel Challenge. Just talked about that already. Added a store tab for players to see all available bundles for a specific weapon, like Cold Warhead, right? I think Modern Warfare 19 might have also had that, but I don't believe Vanguard did. Correct me down below in the comments. That's huge for just improving navigation through bundles, ones you already own, ones that you want to see for specific characters and weapons. If you're going to take content out of the shop, at least have it to where you could still find it through looking at all operator-specific bundles or weapon-specific bundles. That's really huge. New party queuing. Party queuing allows players to automatically join a friend's party once they are finished with their active match. Just like inviting friends to a party or channel, you can access party queuing via the in-game social menu. But then, we have regular bug fixes here. Update contains several fixes to reduce the number of known crashes. We continue to prioritize increased stability and crash fixes across all platforms. Issues where players were hearing incorrect team faction voiceovers. Uh, issues with player squad numbers. Uh, last stand revives being interrupted. Uh, flash and stun grenade blast no longer killing players at low health. Um, a handful of issues that would cause the target marking feature of the spotter scope to persist when not aiming down sights. That was wild. Um, throwing knives can now kill recon drones and bomb drones. Issues with the Gus operator sometimes appearing without a full character model during a match. Also, a bunch of issues regarding kill streaks. Sentry guns there, players' field of view being broken. Um, kill streak command actions from the Wilson and Veto now disabled on a player's in last stand. Also, care packages, uh, overwatch helo fixes. And also a fix regarding the cruise missile there at the end. Um, an issue preventing Jill charge from eliminating agents in Battle Royale and DMZ. Field upgrades. Issues with C4 models, trophy systems, DDoS. Um, some other issues there with recon drones and bomb drones. Fix a duplication issue with the deployable cover when picking up another field upgrade on the ground in Battle Royale and DMZ. Also, a bunch of issues with the UI got fixed. Exploits for players sometimes equip two of the same weapon. Um, issues with gunsmith. Secondary weapons. Uh, loadout drop menus, navigation bars, private match menus, players full Activision ID was not showing in play of the game, um, a garbled clan tag there, another Gus operator fix, some other pregame lobby issues, and then an issue where the background would not lead or would not load when backing in and out of showcase, so that's a good one. Social fixes here. No notifications, so that was something that's been broken for quite some time. Issues with split screen, the friends list scroll bar. The lobby itself, uh, party members, cute party members. What else do we have here? Um, voice count, join player options, people already in the party queue. And some other things there with the clan features and social hub there for ka 2.0. Also, various issues affecting game chat in parties. Lots of cool fixes there. Then for vehicles. Issues causing vehicles sometimes run over enemy combatants after unloading them. Bunch of issues there across uh, DMZ, some battle royale. Uh, deploying claymores and heavy choppers. What else do we have for helicopters? Quite a bit there. And then also issues causing the inflatable decoy to not stick to the train when it inflates. That was a bug. An issue where a player will be instantly killed when colliding with a vehicle at the top of an ascender. Added a new fill bar for last stand and dog tags to match BR and provide additional clarity for down teammates. Added new challenges to the co-op pool of daily challenges, which is awesome. Fixed an issue where equipment UI could appear as orange or flicker white. Issues for low profile, issues for Defender Mount Zaya, all of that have been fixed, which is awesome. And then for Adam Grad Raid Episode. Weapon XP token is now unlocked for each completion of the raid. Added one camel to the regular loot pool. I want to say two, actually, because there's one for Episode 1, one Episode 2. So it's actually two camels that got added to the loot pool. But added additional clarity in the uh, after-action report for all raid-related unlocks, including the operator unlocks, veteran completion unlocks, and random rewards. So great to just improve the UI to let you know what you have or haven't unlocked by doing the episode. Absolutely love that. Added kit select option to allow players to modify their kits in-game if needed. So you'll find those randomly around the environments. Clarity to which rewards are unlockable and which rewards are already unlocked. Awesome. Remove the raid assignment entirely so players can easily queue through the party finder with no barriers. Added unique classified reward type. Added spec ops kit boost to raid store bundles, which allows players to gain 10 stars per kit and instantly unlock all kits upon purchase. Voted um, or added a vote to skip functionality for in-game intro cutscenes. They also got to add that for the outro cutscenes as well. But fix an issue where an oxygen tank icon could appear on the screen of the equipped player. So that's pretty cool. But then for multiplayer, of course, we have a new map, a new playlist for it. All of our new game modes we've talked about in the recent roadmap for the update itself. 
a bunch of bug fixes for farm 18 exploits 66 maps exploits for capturing a point in control on el asilo and then for ranked play a bunch of new restrictions that were confirmed by treyarch some bug fixes quality of life improvements warzone 2.0 more quality of life updates with killstreak availability the existing airspace 2 crowded message will now have a trailing for x seconds attached to it to add better context for the player love that that is fantastic cluster strike and precision airstrike improvements there as you can see so players will not be notified when calling in one of those if they're too close to the affected zone i love that because i've killed myself i don't know how many times by accidentally calling in one of those kill streaks and you guys probably have as well give up timer consistency the give up timer while down is now more consistent across modes and will last at least three seconds navigation ping updates also armor break the text has been removed from the armor break notification when breaking all of an opponent's armor plates for improved clarity whilst the icon has remained auto looting armor plates i thought this was in the game but just bugged apparently it wasn't in the game at all but it was in warzone 1 as armor plates are a critical part of the gameplay loop players will now automatically pick up armor plates as long as they have available inventory or backpack space thank you this is phenomenal hopefully it also improves in dmz as well not just battle royale spawn protection update resurgence kill feed updates as well oh uh, no display was about to redeploy when the resurgence timer reaches zero that's cool i think warzone 1 already had that for rebirth and fortune's keep for ui spectating Friendly pings and splash screens are now visible to spectators. Gas mask loot cards for gas or gas mask loot cards are more accurately or will more accurately reflect their damage amounts. That's awesome. Bug fixes there and also updates to the attack map and mini map. Fixing some issues there that you guys probably noticed. Also, the playlist for Battle Royale already talked about that. The Warzone 3 year anniversary event. We talked about that in a previous video. Some bonus cosmetics you get for free by logging into the game every single day and just actually redeeming that reward over in the item shop. Bomb drones temporarily removed while they fine tune them. Thank you. Gameplay improvements with some pacing balancing. As a team, we are focused on two more core areas of the pacing of BR. So combat engagements and regain opportunities. We'll be addressing this across Season 2 Reloaded and going to Season 3 with the first change being a guaranteed restock public event in the fourth circle. Future improvements include more ground loot supply boxes, especially in the north of the map, resurgent supply boxes being sprinkled throughout the map better, additional ammo caches, and more. More gameplay adjustments there for Almazra BR with the light helo, contract availability, final circle, Ashika Island, redeploy drones, Al or AI combatant departure. They've gotten rid of them completely since the challenge is no longer available for the Path of the Ronin event. Players will now be public enemy number one for search and Caesar contracts and the data highs public events. We also have circle balancing, pacing balancing, buy station availability improvements. I think mobile buy stations are also going to be released in Season 3, which is great. Also, quality of life. Updates to spawn protection right there. Resurgence kill feed. We talked about that a little bit more. And then some bug fixes where we deploy tokens. And then some updates here for DMZ gameplay. We've updated the usage requirements for Building 21 access cards. So you no longer have to actually bring an access card into the match by equipping them prior to infiltration. Just have one and it'll auto equip for you, which is cool. So there's an update with that. Um, also, the player does infill to Building 21 with an access card in their backpack. They will lose that card if they do not extract with it. The change also impacts, or the change only impacts Building 21 access cards and not the access slash key cards for locked spaces inside Building 21. So the colored ones, of course, as those must still be equipped in their backpack prior to infiltration, of course. Enemy combatants DMZ can now operate or arrive in a variety of vehicles, not just the armored truck. They've added variations to infiltration and exfiltration points. Destroyed Supplies contract has been updated to reveal the four closest safes. Reduced total number of vehicles in the modern city. Enemy combatants now have a small chance to drop upgraded weapons upon death. That's fantastic. And also, various bug fixes across the board. Increase, increasing uh, the minimum distance between secure nuclear material contracts. Fixed favor for a friend mission. Fixed description for stronghold reacquisition. Uh, issues with Overlord voiceovers and a bunch of other things here with key elimination, um, match search being stopped, and also it is to prevent the player from using their armor temporarily. Lots of cool updates here for the demilitarized zone. But that's just about it for all of our new patch notes for every game mode here in the mid-season 2 update. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave our thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on these stealth changes that weren't in these patch notes? How are you feeling about the information that we got for every single game mode? Is it enough clarity or are there still some other stealth changes that we just don't know about all that much? And maybe you've seen reports about it over on Twitter. How are you feeling about the new playlist and everything else we discussed? Really hope you've enjoyed and peace out everybody.